Hi guys and welcome to this week's video. Today I'll be trying out a material that I have little experience with, these Pentel oil pastels that I showed briefly in the last haul video, and I'll show and explain how I approach a new medium whilst I experiment with these. The strategy that I go through today is something that I found to be most successful for learning about a new medium and creating pieces of art that I can be proud of. My commentary will be a little back and forth, jumping between describing my process and thoughts, as well as the more technical aspects and theory. But let's begin by looking closely at the packaging of the new medium to find out what information I can glean. Usually there's a product description, colour swatch and basic techniques on art supply packaging. Sometimes art supplies come with a little leaflet showing you helpful tips and tricks, and occasionally tutorials too, with example work created with the materials. All of this information can be helpful at building a first impression of the supply and its potential. In this case, on the back of the box, uh, it gives an overview of the product specifications, but something that surprised me was that it says that you can use paint thinners or solvents to blend the pastels out, and I suppose this shouldn't have been a shocker to me. I use solvents to blend out uh, oil and wax-based coloured pencils, and these are also oil or wax-based too. But this is something that I wouldn't have thought of trying if I hadn't read the packaging. The next step I take to get uh, introduced to the medium is to swatch out all the colours, and not only will this be useful to have in the future to refer to, considering the colour on the paper casings aren't very accurate, it also gives me a fantastic first impression of the qualities of the product. So some things that I pay attention to are opacity, laydown, texture, and of course what colours I have and their vibrancy. I will often write down other information about the colours next to the swatches when available, such as light fast value, but these pastels are student grades so they don't come with this information. Another step I take is to watch tutorials and speed paints about the new medium, and I'll often do this before purchasing a new medium so I have a good idea of the strengths and limitations of the product and I know what to expect. In the case of these oil pastels, I quickly noticed how artwork created with them is often painterly and loose, focusing on colours and value rather than the detail. The approach of a medium is so important to understand before beginning. For example, if I was to approach oil pastels trying to create fine, detailed work, I would quickly become frustrated and potentially lose interest and write off the medium altogether. Learning a few tips and techniques before starting is also helpful. You'll still have the potential to do your own experiments, but I find them to have more direction and meaning to them if I have a foundational knowledge to base them off of. And so that's what I did on the swatch sheet that I made. To begin with, I tried out some different blending techniques, um, some just using the pastels and others with solvents. And the solvents that I tried using were odorless mineral spirits, zest it pencil blend and rubbing alcohol. Moving on, as you can see here, I've created a quick sketch of some quinces on this yellow toned pastel paper to give the oil pastels a little trial run. I've noticed that I usually draw fruit to start with when exploring something new, and this is because they are fairly simple things to draw, often very colourful and easily recognisable. And moreover, there's often lots of uh, nuanced colour in them or detail, and you can choose to focus on either one and still obtain lovely results. With these quinces, I tried blocking in the colours with the light hand to start with, sort of similar to how I approach colour pencil work, um, beginning with the nuanced colour I see in the yellow skin, lots of olivey green colours and orange tones. But when I went over this with the main yellow colour though, I realised that the variety of tones that I used weren't nearly strong enough to still be clear after mixing and they almost disappeared entirely. So I slowly built up the courage to use a heavier hand as I noticed that you can layer this medium up very thickly and it also seems quite forgiving. You can change the colour almost entirely if it's not right. So I was a lot heavier with those olivey green colours and orange colours so that they would show up through the yellow glazing that I did. So my main focus on this piece was colour, particularly the reflected yellow and blue light in the shadows and I really like the result it gave. I noticed shortly after starting that the effects that I was creating were very impressionistic. Um, it really reminded me of Van Gogh, uh, Cezanne or Surat, so I went with it rather than try to fight to step away from the style. After a bit of playing around I really began to see that this is a messy medium. 
There's not much control with these little sticks, and keeping within the lines really wasn't easy. Little crumbs of the pastel would build up, and it was difficult to remove them without smushing them into the paper. I tried using some solvents on a brush to try and rein in the control on this medium, um, and I found that the solvents were really helpful in unifying the layers and reducing the thick texture, meaning that I could add more layers without blending as much into the previous ones. In one of the tutorials I watched, I noticed that the artist drew the subject matter first, and then added in the background and shadows after completing the subject. This meant that they could better conceal rough edges and sharpen up and correct the form if necessary. So I tried this out for myself and thought it worked quite well, and also helped to push the subject matter into the foreground and create depth. This is an example of a technique that I wouldn't have thought of myself, and learning this information in advance really helped me to obtain satisfying results. So with this first go behind me, I begin the next pastel painting and try to build up upon the knowledge and techniques I've started to learn in the first attempt. Um, straight away I noticed how dirty the pastels had become, so I removed the cross-contamination by rubbing the ends into a piece of tissue. So next up I wanted to try something using more blues, reds and purples to explore that area of the spectrum, so I chose to draw some plums. The reference photos I've used will be in the description box down below if you'd like to try them out for yourself. So with this second piece I was a lot braver with the contrasts and undertones. These plums are mainly a dark red but I really want to push the variation a little so I mapped in a lot of dark blue, browns, pinks, oranges and light blues to blend out with the main red tone. I also tried to focus more on the directionality of my marks, using the strokes to help give a better sense of form. I had to change the background colour of the plums a little, because um, as I worked I realised they weren't popping out like I wanted them to, and I ended up settling for a blue colour, which I thought was a good match as it was reflected in some of the highlights on the fruit. As for a little mini review on these Pentel Oil Pastels, I really recommend them. Uh, they're something like uh, £6 or $7 on Amazon, I believe. They're not artist grade and are almost certainly not light fast, so I won't be using them to complete any pieces for selling, but as something fun to dabble in, they've been great. The range of colours is beautiful, they seem very pigmented, they blend well together and accept a lot of layering. I used Fabriano Tiziano pastel paper for this, which I would also recommend. This paper I picked up relatively cheaply from a local art store a while ago, and I haven't had much oppor opportunity to use it. I bought the paper initially for colour pencil work, but realised I didn't really like the texture as much as Cancer Mittons. So it sort of sat in my cupboard for a while looking very sad, um, but I'm sure any paper with a good amount of texture will work for oil pastels, and you certainly don't need to use the same paper that I'm using. And for my last trial piece, I wanted to go a little bit larger, and I struggled to find a photo that I really liked online that suited the space that I had to work with, so I picked the three prettiest looking nectarines out from my fruit bowl and drew them from life. This was definitely a challenge in itself, because I'm so used to drawing from a photo. For me, it became a lot more difficult to see colour out of context and detect a subtle nuanced colour. With a photograph, for example, I find it easier to isolate a tiny area to be able to choose the right colour paint, pencil or pastel that I need. I tried refraining from using solvents on this piece, and instead used a blending stamp to even out colour, and I think that I um, prefer this method actually, as it doesn't destroy all the texture from the thickly applied pastel, and I really like the impasto look. As I was getting through these nectarines, I really began to notice how my uh, fingers were cramping up from holding the oil pastels. They require quite a bit of pressure to apply and blend, and become kind of tricky to hold as they become shorter or break. My fingers are pretty prone to cramping and getting sore and stiff, so perhaps it's not a problem with that uh, many people will experience, but I wouldn't recommend this medium if you have joint problems or struggle with grip strength and that sort of thing. I have heard that you can get extenders designed to grip and lengthen the body of a pastel to make it easier to hold, um, which might be worthwhile if you're considering pastels more seriously, 
or uh, maybe just a regular pencil extender will do the trick. However, I, I think that with a set of pastels this affordable, it's probably more cost effective just to buy a new set if the sticks are getting too short to use efficiently. And as I mentioned before, these are a pretty messy material to use and there are a lot of sticky oil pastel -y crumbs all over my desk now, which I'll be very carefully picking up and cleaning off before I put any fresh paper down on my work surface. I definitely recommend keeping a pack of wet wipes handy as you work, so you can stay on top of the mess to some extent. Back to the drawing, I found it challenging to convey the blush on the nectarine at the front. It had small areas where the yellow was mottled with the red in a pattern that followed the form, and after working at it and uh, reworking it, I finally got to a point that I liked. The light source of my little composition was slightly ambiguous, and as I spent time working, the bluish light from the window behind me became weaker, so I tried to exaggerate colour as I went to make up for this, uh, pulling in reflected light where I could. And of course, pushing those colours really helped to emphasise the impressionistic look I was going for. I think I'm happiest with the middle nectarine. There's something about the lighting on it which I'm especially proud of that really portrays the matte texture of the fruit well, I think. I started on a larger piece after I fi finished my nectarines here, but I haven't had a chance to complete it yet, but perhaps I'll upload it as a bonus speed paint in the next week or two if it all works out nicely. I feel like I've learned a lot from using oil pastels, and I'm sure these skills will be transferred onto work I complete in um, acrylic, soft pastels, and coloured pencil in particular, because of the use of colour and texture. Sometimes it's worth playing around with something out of your, your routine and comfort zone, even if it's not a medium or style that you plan on using often. It might just touch your work in ways you wouldn't expect. Personally, I'm a bit of a control freak when it comes to detail and crisp edges, but these have really taught me that that's not so important, and that you can achieve a beautiful softness by letting up a little and letting the colours speak for themselves. Just to quickly recap my process that I explained in the video. First is research. I'd watch reviews and tutorials before purchasing a new material. Second is packaging. When I receive the new medium, I'd study the packaging for useful information. Third is swatching. Swatch out the colours and do some sample techniques to get a basic feel for the medium. Fourth is sketching. I'd move on to some practice sketches with the material, using a simple form such as fruit as the subject matter. And fifth is reflection. I do these last two points a few times, reflecting on what I like, disliked, and have learned each time, and then I would eventually move on to a more time intensive piece. So here are the final sketches, I hope you like the effect I have achieved. If you're an oil pastel artist, I would love to hear um, some of your tips and techniques that you've learnt or experienced. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you found this video interesting and helpful, leave it a like if you did. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more reviews, tutorials, challenges and art advice videos. Hope you have a lovely week and I'll see you in the next video!